at the back of it. Matter and number. And number and light. Faces light up the places that I cannot, I can no longer see. For the numbers have turned clear, like the glass on the face of a mirror. And life is the silver coating at the back of it. It found face in the belly of nothing, and so it began. In an act of creative self-circumcision, what is, cut an imaginary nothing out of everything, and found this imagined bit of nothing to be pregnant with an image of its very self. It recognized its face by looking into the belly of nothing, and this imaginary nothing. She is like the foreskin of all of creation, and she is in love with everything inside her great and fertile belly, and she is mother to her mate, and she gladly gives birth to the image of all that is, and simultaneously marries him, as she moves into the palace he has prepared for her, inside of himself, mother nothing, also known as nothing, or zero, and her mate, also known as unity, or one, these two, are the numerical Adam, and the new miracle of Eve, and as such they are neither composite nor prime, but they are the parents of the upper class primes, and they are the parents of the commoner composites, and they are the grandparents to all the cute little fractions which follow them around, and all together they form a family, the herd, of rational numbers, and all these children and grandchildren, the entire herd, came to be, within the space between their parents and grandparents, within the bounds of unity, where everything is addressed. But this space was not empty space, it was a place of revelation, where, simultaneous with the surprise bris, childbearing, wedding ceremony, of different sort of number, the unborn numbers, the transcendental numbers, and their irrational offspring, are revealed. These most numerous, yet to be, Numbers comprise the numerical Garden of Eden, where the herd of rational numbers lived out their life. Life today might be considered to be alive on the inside and dead on the outside, and when someone dies, its flesh is an empty vessel, it is dead inside and out. But for the herd of rational numbers is a different story. The herd is alive on the outside, and not alive on the inside. Its outside is made of skin, its inside, what we would call face. Its skins might be compared to single or a group of self-entangled mirrors, reflecting the brightest shade of pitch black, all over itself. Inside was its face, under great pressure, compressed into a single face, which spilled out like blood, and poured out like the heavens, when the herd suddenly died, which, itself, is another long story. Its blood became the fields of our spirit and its flesh became the point-like particles of our, and all the other, universes, and the stench of its death, was to become what we call time, an illusion fashioned by the grieving titans to protect themselves from their sorrow. The idea is that time alters scale, or the alteration of scale can account for time, the Titans fashioned time out of an expansion of scale so that everything would fit and stay in one place. So they could keep a closer account of what went on. To do this they had to make it so that, as someone once wrote or remarked, everything doesn't happen at once. The future is imaginably tiny, the past is huge, so we could never go back in time and kill our great-grandparents, because
by going into the past would shrink us down to something about the size of a neutrino, and we would be whizzing about through matter, and our great grandmom and dad as if they weren't even there. On the other hand going into the future would scale us up. Nature does allow us to venture into our own, or anyone else's future and destroy it, because it hasn't happened yet, and, besides people do that to themselves every day. If Isaac Newton had gotten his ideas from someone in the future he would have said, it is only because I have stood on the shoulders of some very tiny people. This also explains the direction of time's arrow. Which flows downhill from the large, ever inflating past to the tiny ever shrinking future, because, whatever their relative position to each other, north, south, east or west, above or below, in or out, the journey from the tiny to the large is always taken up a hill. Gravity is an instinct left over from the flesh of their herd wanting to be together. I think I will stop here. I think that's enough for now Jim. I will hear from you later.